Mulder, he wants to shut down the X-Files and he wants you out of the Bureau. Talking about episode 10, Fallen Angel. It was written by Alex Gantz and Howard Gordon and directed by Larry Shaw. It premiered on November 19th, 1993. It is our first true alien myth arc episode. Oh yeah, before I forget, I just got these at a local auction. It's a bunch of X-Files laser discs, including Fallen Angel. I don't have a laser disc player, but they're still pretty neat. They're like if compact discs weren't compact at all. Sir, sorry to disturb you, sir, but we picked up an unidentified bogey. I I think you should see the replay for yourself. Then it started going crazy. What about other aircraft in the area or missile testing? Sir, no known aircraft can maneuver like this. This is Marshall Bell, who you probably recognize from Deadwood or Starship Troopers, maybe Total Recall. He will also go on to do an episode of Chris Carter's Millennium. He's still working. Uh, he's recently done episodes of Reservation Dogs and Outer Banks. He does a really great turn here as the imperious and intimidating Colonel Henderson. What she tracked was a meteor. Its aberrant movement was obviously due to instrument malfunction. But, sir... Your report will reflect these facts. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I have a confirmed fallen angel in Sector 87. Mobilize Operation Falcon immediately. So this has happened before. There's a specific protocol to manage this type of event. I, th I think he just got microwaved. Government officials remain vague about the toxic cargo that has caused the immediate evacuation of Townsend, Wisconsin's 12,000 residents. Last night at 2317, that fence was breached. He's part of a crash retrieval unit. Hmm. Quick response. I'd say you have 24 hours. So, the first question. What's Deep Throat's angle here? Why is he helping Mulder? Really good ambient atmospheric music. Live round, sir? You got a problem with that? No, sir. We were told that this is just a drill. They told you wrong. Sir. Now this, this has got to be a classic trope, even at this point, right? Where somehow you attach yourself to the bottom of a truck or some kind of vehicle and sneak past security. Good job, though. So finally, Mulder has gotten some evidence of something. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not a train derailment. Oh. It's so rude to just pull somebody's film out. You just made the worst mistake of your life, Agent Mulder. We're trying to contain an ecological disaster. It's a lot of firepower just to protect Mother Nature. We both know what's out there. Oh, let me introduce myself. My name is Max Fennig. I'm with the National Investigative Committee of Aerial Phenomenon. Everybody say hello to Max. Max is played by Scott Bellis, a Vancouver local. And Max is a archetypal UFO enthusiast, right? He's very smart, suspicious, and a little weird. And here he's kind of representing maybe the early idea of the lone gunman, 
right? We can take the vagabond appearance and the penchant for technology and, of course, the paranoia. Nightcap. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like the Roswell cover-up all over again. Another intrepid soul in search of a close encounter. Is that what this is about? I don't understand you, Mulder. What you saw was not a toxic spill. But it wasn't a UFO, either. It was a downed Libyan jet with a nuclear warhead. Scully's frustration is clearly warranted, but her paranormal skepticism is far outweighed by her credulity when it comes to appeals to authority. She'll just believe anything she's told by someone at a higher position. Over U.S. airspace. You really believe that story? That story happens to be highly classified. A highly classified lie. This appears to be the Predator. Hmm. That could be a problem. My assignment is to bring you back, not to help you dig yourself in deeper. It's like housekeeping hasn't been here yet. Max? We at NICAP have been following your career really closely ever since you became involved with the X-Files. Following my career? How? With the Freedom of Information Act. Woo! Freedom of Information Act. Being a giant pain in the ass to federal bureaucrats since 1967. Your travel expenses are a matter of public record. Of course, I read your article in Omni about the Gulf Breeze sightings. MF Looter, I know. MF Looter's an anagram for F. Mulder. Max's vintage Airstream trailer is like a physical representation of the contents of his mind. It's a discordant mess of ideas and obsessions just strewn out everywhere. They're right here. Oh, here they are. Latest crop circle photos from Project Argus. I see you've read the literature. I try to keep up. Now, what about the it's one rude you to go through somebody's medicine yeah. cabinet, Stana. You ever hear of this? Yeah, Wolf Industry supplies the CIA with all of its surveillance equipment. What have you got, Max? What the hell? Charlie, we got a situation here! No, sir, it will not get away. Not this time. 200,000 megahertz. Sir! Target on the northeast side. Foot speed, seven miles per hour, sir. <laughs> saw him that night, didn't you? Yes. And three others from a fire crew. They were all DOA with fifth and sixth degree burns to over 90% of their bodies. Dr. Oppenheim, in your opinion, could those burns have been caused by ionizing radiation? Dr. Oppenheim is treating victims of severe irradiation. Hmm. What hadn't thought. I suppose it's possible if the exposure was sufficiently intense. I've read about these kinds of burns, Scully. Yeah, so have I in Hiroshima at ground zero. I'm talking about close encounter mortalities. I have a stack of X-Files reporting the same clinical result. But if we don't make the OPR inquest by tomorrow morning, there may not be any more X-Files. The, the push-pull of Bureau leadership trying to remove Mulder or just terminate the X-Files entirely is well illustrated here and just sort of reminds us that it's one of the show's central tensions. It's really made easy by Mulder just doing whatever the hell he wants whenever. How many more people have to die before you rethink your approach? But in here, I call the shots. Assuming, of course, you want me to take care of you, man. This seems like a perfect performance for a character used to managing things with, like, brutal efficiency now facing a powerful unknown force. Get this man out of my sight. Yes, sir. You were having some kind of seizure. Seizure? It's impossible. And when you have a seizure, you have no memory of it? As a kid, I used to wake up in strange places with no idea where I was or how I got there. It 
was terrible. We lost all but two. They're still in critical condition on the way to the burn unit at Johns Hopkins. So what do you think, Scully? What's going on out there? I don't know. Max, there's an unusual incision behind his left ear. Are you saying Max Venig is an abductee? So let's be fair here. Scully has traveled probably on short notice. She's had to rescue Mulder. She's trying to mitigate his insubordination. And she's just stayed up all night treating victims who are going to die in like one of the most visibly horrible ways possible. And he's still a pain in the ass about all this. You don't seem to understand, Scully. Max doesn't believe he was abducted by aliens. I believe he was. Isn't that where... Same exact spot, sir. Though I am reading a much larger craft this time. Meteor, Miss Cork. Well, sir, the meteor seems to be hovering over a small town in eastern Wisconsin. You know this woman has told everybody she knows all about this by now, right? Of all the places he could have been, he was right here. Don't you think that's more than a coincidence? If Max was abducted, that would go a long way to explaining his obsession. Alpha team, secure the roof. The third, approaching from 40 meters. The show writers have not really coalesced around an idea of how they exactly want the extraterrestrials to appear. I'm scared. I know. Don't let him take me. I won't let him take me. Come on, Max. Come with me. Max! We indicate only one figure inside the building. What? So Max is some kind of a conduit. He's like a medium of physical transference. I can't say I really understand. Doesn't seem like Scully does either. Where is he? He's gone. They got to him first. Thank you, Agent Scully. Sir, request permission to make a statement. Request denied. Don't worry. It's only a matter of time. I'm surprised I lasted this long. Good luck. Break a leg. You know, she could have gotten the door for him. You know what? No, no, he can get it his damn self. No, that's fair. Oh, toxic contamination. Are we back in that? You read my report. Explain the disappearance of Max Fennick. That is irrelevant, Agent Mulder. The man was abducted. We all know it. Everybody in this room knows it. Colonel Henderson's written testimony states that Fennick's body was found two hours later in a cargo container. You can deny all the things I've seen. All the things I've discovered, but not for much longer. Why did you countermand our decision? Mulder's conduct was in clear violation, not only of bureau procedures, but of federal law. But his occasional insubordination is, in the end, far less dangerous. Always keep your friends close, Mr. McGrath. But keep your enemies closer. There are so many questions here. What is the nature of this alien life form? What happened to Max? What, what kind of game is Deep Throat running? Is he trying to help Mulder? Is he playing both sides so he always comes out on top? I think we can safely call this the first true alien myth arc episode. We have a UFO, we've got this intelligent extraterrestrial life form, we have an apparent abduction, and we get the shadowy government slash military cover-up of events. That's it. That's Fallen Angel. I'll do trivia. And then next is number 11, Eve. Amazing. Amazing? <laughs> Hardly. Hey, you want to see something amazing? Come with me. Enigmatic, Dr. Scully. 